civil defense or civil protection is an effort to protect the citizens of a state, generally non-combatants, from natural disasters. It uses the principles of emergency operations, prevention, mitigation, preparation, response, or emergency evacuation and recovery. Programs of this sort were initially discussed at least as early as the 1920s and were implemented in some countries during the 1930s as the threat of war and aerial bombardment grew. It became widespread after the threat of nuclear weapons was realized. Since the end of the Cold War, the focus of civil defense has largely shifted from military attack to emergencies and disasters in general. The new concept is described by a number of terms, each of which has its own specific shade of meaning, such as crisis management, emergency management, emergency preparedness, contingency planning, civil contingency, civil aid and civil protection. In some countries, civil defense is seen as a key part of defense in general. For example the Swedish language word totalförsvar, total defense, refers to the commitment of a wide range of national resources to its defense, including the protection of all aspects of civilian life. Some countries have organized civil defense along paramilitary lines, or incorporated it within armed forces, such as the Soviet Civil Defense Forces. A special government department, the Civil Defense Service, was established by the Home Office in 1935. Its remit included the pre-existing ARP as well as wardens, firemen, initially the Auxiliary Fire Service, AFS, and latterly the National Fire Service, NFS, Fire Watchers, Rescue, First Aid Post, Stretcher Party and Industry. Over 1.9 million people served within the CD, nearly 2,400 lost their lives to enemy action. Air Raid Warden testing his equipment in Brisbane in October 1942. The organization of civil defense was the responsibility of the local authority. Volunteers were ascribed to different units depending on experience or training. Each local civil defense service was divided into several sections. Wardens were responsible for local reconnaissance and reporting, and leadership, organization, guidance and control of the general public. Wardens would also advise survivors of the locations of rest and food centers, and other welfare facilities. Rescue parties were required to assess and then access bombed-out buildings and retrieve injured or dead people. In addition they would turn off gas, electricity and water supplies, and repair or pull down unsteady buildings. Medical services, including first aid parties, provided on the spot medical assistance. The expected stream of information that would be generated during an attack was handled by report and control teams. A local headquarters would have an ARP controller who would direct rescue, first aid and decontamination teams to the scenes of reported bombing. If local services were deemed insufficient to deal with the incident then the controller could request assistance from surrounding boroughs. Fire guards were responsible for a designated area slash building and required to monitor the fall of incendiary bombs and pass on news of any fires that had broken out to the NFS. They could deal with an individual magnesium electron incendiary bomb by dousing it with buckets of sand or water or by smothering. Additionally, gas decontamination teams kitted out with gas tight and waterproof protective clothing were to deal with any gas attacks. They were trained to decontaminate buildings, roads, rail and other material that had been contaminated by liquid or jelly gases. Anderson shelters were widely distributed in the United Kingdom by civil defense authorities, in preparation for aerial bombardment. Little progress was made over the issue of air raid shelters, because of the apparently irreconcilable conflict between the need to send the public underground for shelter and the need to keep them above ground for protection against gas attacks. In February 1936 the Home Secretary appointed a technical committee on structural precautions against air attack. During the Munich crisis, local authorities dug trenches to provide shelter. After the crisis, the British government decided to make these a permanent feature, with a standard design of precast concrete trench lining. They also decided to issue the Anderson shelter free to poorer households and to provide steel props to create shelters in suitable basements. During the Second World War, the ARP was responsible for the issuing of gas masks, prefabricated air raid shelters, such as Anderson shelters, as well as Morrison shelters, the upkeep of local public shelters, and the maintenance of the blackout. The ARP also helped rescue people after air raids and other attacks, and some women became ARP ambulance attendants whose job was to help administer first aid to casualties, search for, 